Last up tonight is London-based mum of two, Charlotte Morley, who's here with a business that's a world away from her previous career. I wanted to do good, so I went to work in intelligence. I did a few crazy things. Probably the most crazy was flying into Iraq in the middle of the night in the back of a RAF Hercules, wearing body armor and a helmet. Honestly, I'm more scared about going into the den than I was about flying into Iraq. It's a bit like my bedroom, to be fair. Any bigger clothes. <laughs> Some of them have got a slightly nastier bite than others, I would say. <laughs> Hello Dragons, my name's Charlotte and I'm the founder of The Little Loop, the UK's first shared wardrobe for kids. I would like to pitch today for a £70,000 investment in return for a 7.5% equity stake. I have two children, Rosa and Edith. They said to tell you, hello Dragons, <laughs> please don't set mummy on fire. <laughs> Since Rosa was tiny, I realised that there was a huge problem with children's clothing. Every time they grow, all the seasons change, you have to replace them all. It costs a fortune and you're left with piles of barely worn clothes that you have to dispose of. The Little Loop is reinventing this hugely broken wheel. Parents can choose from the best ethical and sustainable brands, keep the clothes for as long as they need them and then swap them anytime. They'll save around two thirds of the cost of buying new on average and they'll have none of the hassle of sorting, storing and selling clothes when they're done. The opportunity in this space is huge and I would love it if one of you would join me on that journey. A service for swapping and sharing children's used garments is the proposition from Charlotte Morley. You do have a sample one of our parcels each. She's seeking £70,000 in exchange for a 7.5% equity stake. Deborah Meaden is keen to find out how the clothing concept creates cash. So you've really clearly described the issues, but how do the financials work? How does the money flow? So the consumer pays us on a subscription basis £18 a month in exchange for around about £165 worth of clothes. Most consumers swap about every three months. So they're getting about £600 worth of clothes for £200. So each year, they're saving about £440. OK, and then of that £18, mm -hmm. pound, who gets what? So um, the brands will take on average a 44% share of the revenue and we take on average a 56% share. Charlotte, I'm sure you know I've got two small kids. I do, I've yeah. faced exactly this problem. We've created our own little loop between my other mummy friends, but actually, if this had existed when I'd had my kids, I would have absolutely been right that's there. That's the best thing I could have heard today. If I don't get an investment, Sarah, that's fantastic. It, it, it just seems brilliant. Thank you. Um, I don't understand a lot about the landscape for rental products, though. So are there any other successful business models you can kind of, of enlighten course. us with a little bit? And... Sure. America's further ahead than we are in this. So Rent the Runway has been in existence for about 12 years, I think, mm -hmm. and they're about to IPO for around about one billion. And how are you going to achieve that level of success? So in the next year, we'd like to get to 1,000 customers, um, which will take us to £135,000 revenue. Year two, we're hoping to grow to 7,000 customers, which would give us um, a revenue of £950,000. Mm -hmm. And then in our third year, we hope to increase to 30,000 customers, which would take us to a £4.16 million revenue. Right, excellent. Multi-million pound projections in an untapped market, two things that never go out of fashion for Sarah Davies. Retail maestro Tuka Suleiman's business empire has clothing at its core. Is he sold on Charlotte's sartorial subscription service? I love the dream, and, and I'm just trying to get into the reality of it all. Mm -hmm. You know and I know that children's clothes are much cheaper mm. than women's clothes. Yes. So therefore, the secret here is having product that they can't get anywhere else, or the opposite. You link up with somebody that, that's going to give you the product, a big retailer, who thinks they have a duty to be involved in this. So if a big retailer came on board, let's say H&M, Zara and Marks and Spencers. Mm -hmm. 
said, we want to team up with you because it's the right thing to do. Would you be against that? Marks and Spencers, I would be much more open-minded to. You would? To. Yes, because I think that they have really great sustainable and ethical credentials. That is music to my ears, because you know, I, I am close to Marks and Spencers. Um, look, I love the business, and I could probably add a lot of value to this, just for my connections. The question is, at what level? And I just want to wait and see where the other dragons are coming from. <laughs> OK. To Kosuliman dangles his little black book of contacts as a carrot, but stops short of making an offer. And it appears Peter Jones has picked up on some potential problems in getting the big labels in the loop with Charlotte's offering. One thing that immediately hits me that I'd like to focus on is many, many, many brands that are growing today and have done, they want consumers to buy the next product as fast as they can. One thing they don't want is that product to go into the market and be used five times. Honestly, at this stage, we don't want to work with those brands. Because of our message and because of who we are, we only want to work with ethical and sustainable brands at this point. The next point that I have, though, is fast fashion. It's unprecedented. I cannot believe the price points of some of these products. So my concern is how big could this bubble go without bursting because of pressure on competitive market price for product? It's a really hard problem and I think fast fashion, it can't continue like this for the sake of the planet and I know that might sound idealistic but even the government is moving in a direction of trying to make it so that fast fashion businesses cannot continue to produce clothes at that cost without paying um, a, pr a price for that. Look, I think the message is absolutely great, but you are not going to see any movement, let alone a seismic shift in that marketplace, in my opinion, at all. I think the chance of that happening is, is beyond remote. So sadly, I'm out. Peter Jones doesn't share the entrepreneur's expectations for a more sustainable clothing industry and becomes the first dragon to exit discussions. Social media savvy Stephen Bartlett has worked with numerous big name high street brands and he thinks the fashion world could be heading down a familiar path. It almost reminds me of um, the music industry where once upon a time you'd go and buy music for 99p and nobody wanted Spotify. There was no incentive at all for Warner and Universal to sign up to Spotify. But when something becomes inevitable, I th think you get to the point where you have no choice. And it's funny because I've sat in the room with some of these big global fast fashion brands and they're talking to me about creating their own secondary marketplace because all these secondary marketplace apps are now rising and taking such a huge amount of their market away that they're now thinking of creating their own. So I, I actually think this is inevitable. Charlotte, I'm going to I'm going I'm going to break cover. I think I I absolutely love this. You know, it's a business that I think I actually want to be part of something that makes a difference. So, I'm going to offer you all of the money. And I want 12 and a half percent of the business. Okay, thank you. Deborah Meaden, a dragon driven by sustainability, becomes the first to make a play for the proposition. But in return for the £70,000, she's asking for 5% more equity than the 7.5 that's up for grabs. And it appears Stephen Bartlett has spotted a synergy between the company and what he can offer the entrepreneur. This business seems to have it all, right? So I've spent the last 10 years from Silicon Valley building tech companies, um, which got acquired by Amazon, to here in London doing growth for tech startups. That led to my company being founded. And in that time, I had the privilege of working on the marketing of um, a lot of big, major global fashion brands. So this is my wheelhouse, right, all over. I've just sold myself completely like a peacock. <laughs> But, I, but, I, but I, I have no choice here because this is perfect for, for what I do. So I'm going to make you an offer. I'm going to offer you the full £70,000 for 15% of the business. 
I love the business, but most of all, I think you are a fantastic entrepreneur. Thank you. And I believe I've got all the mentoring skills you need to take you on that journey. So I'd like to offer you all of the money for 12.5%. Thank you, Sarah, that's kind, thanks. Whew. Don't get me wrong, each dragon here can do a certain job for you. But I'm the expert in this field. So I'm gonna make you an offer. I will offer you all of the money, but I want 15%. Okay, thank you. To the wall. <laughs> Four offers for the clothing entrepreneur. But in exchange for the 70,000 pounds, Tuka Suleiman and Stephen Bartlett want 15% equity, double the seven and a half that's up for grabs with Sarah Davies and Deborah Meaden, each seeking 12.5%. Thank you, Tuka, thank you, Sarah. Deborah, you were the dragon that I came here for. Um, I had a bit of a crush on you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> In a purely platonic way. You're negotiating at the moment, so take that back. And also, Stephen, because I do recognise how much experience you've got in growth. I'm going to ask for something that I've never heard asked for in the den before. Would you both be prepared to invest all of the money? So £70,000 each, taking the total investment to £140,000 for 12.5% each. I don't think it has happened in the den. See, that's why I like you, Charlotte. <laughs> you know, I would love to do that. It's it really down to, down to what Stephen feels. Um, but I actually think you've got a very good combination there. Charlotte, I think you're 10 out of 10. And um, just by adding Deborah Mead into your business, it becomes hugely more valuable. So on that basis, I would then increase my personal valuation of this business proposition, and therefore I'm willing to reduce my um, equity ask to 12.5% for sure. Wow. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, Charlotte. Thank you very much. Amazing. I hope that's good, Tears. <laughs> oh. <laughs> thank you. I would be delighted to accept. Thank you very much. Oh, amazing. <laughs> Brilliant. Congrats. Thank you. An emotional end to the entrepreneur's pitch as her audacious move to ask for double the cash pays off. And she leaves the den with £140,000 and the backing of two dragons who can help turn her fashion business into the next big thing. I can't quite believe what just happened. I'm really not sure. I think I'm in shock. <laughs> that was absolutely a moment. What an amazing entrepreneur. Oh, wow. my God, that was meant so much time. The dragons that have invested are incredible. I'm just so excited for what we might be able to do together. Can I just say I love you, Sarah? <laughs> Sarah's actually sitting here with tears in her eyes. Crying because I didn't, because she didn't pick me. That's that's why it is.